The simple truth is, while you can open doors for people to de-escalate themselves, you cannot de-escalate them. Hi everybody, welcome to today's bonus badge cam lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video is actually two different dash cams out of Nevada County in California. Now more than ever, you need trusted coverage to help you win the fight after the fight. The company I trust and recommend is Firearms Legal Protection. They offer discounts on all their plans at the link in the description. I recommend the premium plan. Go read the news story that I've linked in the description or watch the press release from the sheriff's office and you'll see that this woman is walking down the street, kind of the middle of the road with her two young children. It's cold outside, they don't have coats on. Somebody approached them about uh, a missing dog they had found and she acted really weird towards them and she knocked on a neighbor's door and was incoherent towards the neighbor. And so both of those folks have called 911 because the woman has stormed off with her children and is acting incoherent and is walking down the middle of the road. So deputies respond. We have badge cams. I do want to warn you, it gets pretty loud here. I've moderated the volume, but let's listen in to the badge cams. You're not in trouble or anything like that. Oh, I'm I know what you do to my baby. I'm not going to touch your babies, but I need you to put your knife away. Don't County hurt Walpaw, we're going to have one at gunpoint. She has a knife. Don't I'm not going to hurt your babies. Hey, I'm not going to hurt your babies. I'm not everyone gonna. Everyone knows every single place, hey. every single name. If hey. something happens to me and my babies, okay. everyone in the whole world. Hey, listen. Know. Ah, We're not. Ah, oh I got David. You touch my babies. Everyone knows your face. Everyone knows what you're going to do. You can't say that. I'm crazy. That's my mama. That's my mama. They know who you are. I just want to help. Put the knife down. Put the knife down. Put the knife down. No! Put the knife down. No! I don't give a No! I don't have anything to say. Everyone knows who you are. Everyone knows who you are. Those lawyers you scared of, those lawyers who have been waiting, they have all the evidence. So tell me now! Because they will find out. Officers did everything they could to provide emergency medical aid to this woman. Unfortunately, she did not make it, and there's a lot of lessons coming from this one. 
an absolutely tragic outcome all the way around. One of the classes that we teach now at Active Self Protection is realistic de-escalation strategies and how you can help open doors for people in this arena. Hit the link in the description below. It'll take you to my website and you can find out when we'll be in your area. Pretty soon here in 2021, we're gonna do it as an online seminar as well. So keep up with us on that. Let's think about lessons. So there's been some backlash on this one in the community because they say, well, wait a minute, where was the community response team on this one? Well, frankly, if you go read the news stories, the community response team wasn't available that day because of budgetary constraints. And I think that's a problem. And I think maybe a crisis response team or a community crisis team might have been a better solution in this particular case, but that's not the officer's fault. They gotta respond when they're dispatched and again, look after the welfare of this woman and her children, who'd apparently had some problems with a shelter and all kinds of stuff. Now, I think that the officer does a good job here when this woman pulls a knife and he, he does a great job here of moderating his tone and saying, ma'am, I don't wanna hurt your babies. I, I just need you to put the knife away so that we can talk. And I think that his tone was very respectful and he did the best job he could of trying to de-escalate this situation. A couple other things that we really wanna talk about as the perspective shifts to the other dash cam is that I like the fact that he gave some space here. So when we talk about realistic de-escalation strategies for police officers, one of the things that we want to talk about is maintaining discretionary space and time when you can. Now, again, you can't de-escalate somebody. Only they can de-escalate themselves. However, you can provide some space so that you have discretionary time to continue to talk. Now, clearly, when this thing gets going, this woman is high emotions, non-compliant, and contaminated thinking. And so you got to respond with crisis communication in this case. That is trying to establish some contact with her, but getting her to put the knife down because she's not listening. She's not responding to what you're doing. So sometimes you got to use this kind of crisis communication. Ma'am, I need you to put the knife down or whatever. I don't want to hurt your children. I want to be here for you. But sometimes even asking someone's name, giving them your name might help in that case. But when you got somebody that's high emotion like this, really difficult. Again, I think the officer did a really good job here of backing away, giving some more time and some more space, kind of thinking she's not really a danger to her children, but she can be very quickly a danger to the officer. Now, I, I do think that these officers did a pretty good job of maintaining space with each other, having one officer on less lethal, one officer on lethal cover. And I think that was really good because of the volatility of the situation. You got to have less lethal, you know, if you're going to have less lethal like a taser out, you got to have the, the lethal cover. And so I think he did a fine job with that. But something for us to think about as she turns around here is, is the effectiveness of the taser. We see the taser fail all the time on camera. It's not a, a unilateral solution by any stretch. And again, she's turning on him and, uh, you know, jumping him with this knife. So a couple things, you got to recognize officers that when you use the taser, you have escalated the conflict. Uh, it's not gonna negotiate much anymore. Now, I'm not saying that that's an escalation. I guess I should say that that very well could escalate the perp. So use it when you need to, 100%. Just recognize that it's kind of a definitive moment. Number two, you're probably not gonna get prongs inside that coat. That, that jacket is not gonna do it. Best bet is probably to try to get them both in the thighs. Very difficult. Now, the, uh, the officer who's on lethal cover here, is he justified uh, in his actions in shooting her? I think the answer here is 100% yes. She's charging his partner with a knife. Uh, he is lethal cover. His partner has a less lethal tool, doesn't have a gun out, shouldn't have a gun out. So absolutely, he has to protect his partner. Uh, this woman is a deadly threat to his partner in the moment. So this is kind of the justification of deadly force. Although, of course, it's terrible, right? Her children are around. She's having a crisis. Nobody wants to do that, least of all the officers. But you got to do what you got to do in the moment because the perp's actions determine your actions. Now, as she keeps going, we see the officer that is uh, on the taser do something that I think is really good. And that is he turns his feet to run. He doesn't try to back up. You are never going to backpedal as fast as someone is running. And therefore, when you go, okay, wait a minute, she's got a knife and she is charging at me and my tool is not working. That's the turn. That's the time to turn your nose in the other direction and run hard. And I think that the officer did a good job of that in the hope of buying himself some time, whether that's to get his gun out, let his partner work or those kinds of things. You got to know when it's not time to back up anymore. And that's kind of like I'm playing cornerback in, in football. Now, we saw here, if you're listening on the badge cams, that we, we heard here two quick shots, a hesitation, and two more quick shots. And I'm sure some people are asking, why did he take those last two shots? I'm speculating here. And I know it's speculation, so hear me on that. But I'm almost positive what we had there is we had two shots and then a trigger freeze. In other words, he didn't let his trigger reset all the way because if you look at the cadence of his shots, the first two shots are the exact same cadence as the second two shots, and it's split by a, a median that would be a fifth shot. So my guess is he tried to take five shots 
and one of them he didn't reset his trigger and that's why that is there. So he didn't you know, pause to think about what he was doing and go and he shot until she went down and one of them was a trigger freeze. And when she did go down, he stopped and I think that was the right answer. Now, next thing here, I think this officer shows uh, some heart here, trying to get the kiddos away, trying to keep them away from the problem. Of course, they're distraught. They just watched their mom get shot. But I think these, these deputies did a pretty darn good job of trying to get these kiddos to a safe place. And also think about the bystander who came out of her house here. Here, let me help these children. Dangerous to do, but I think very morally responsible to do. And I'm glad that she did. Now, of course, the officers have to get her to drop the knife. They approach her while she's still got the knife and she's still yelling at him and those things. She's a danger to herself, to everyone else. They don't want to shoot her again. So as soon as they get her into custody, they are going to start first aid on her. And I think these deputies did a fine job of that. As soon as they could get her into custody, because they got to get the knife away from her before they can safely approach her. And as soon as they have that, they do their best. And that means they had to have their medical equipment in their patrol cruiser with them, which they did, and they used it to the very best of their ability. So I think obviously, friends, this is a terrible outcome. This isn't the kind of outcome that we want to have in this situation. But in the end, I mean, we put the deputies in this kind of situation and there's nothing they're gonna do about that. I wish there was a crisis response team that was available to respond to this one and it might've been a better solution to have that, but there simply wasn't one available. So I think it's worth the discussion for us as a community and as a nation to talk about, do we wanna add funding for crisis response teams? I think the answer to that should be yes. And I think every police officer that I know would want that. But the fact of the matter is we don't have that. And in many places, they're they're on part-time or not at all. And so because we don't have that, we send, because what are people doing? They're calling 911 and 911 is going to respond to make sure everybody is okay. And that means police presence. And, and unfortunately, outcomes like this happen when we do. So let's think about that. I think our answer is not to defund police, but rather to add funding for things like crisis response teams and add more for that. So then that way they can respond to those kinds of things. I think the actions of these officers at the end of the day were justified, though of course the outcome here is, is really terrible, friends, and I think everybody says that all the way around. And, and again, uh, you know, I hope we pray for this woman and her family in particular.